All right, so I'm gonna start this off with the statement that um, norms work substantially better if we agree on them. And we are, we've chosen to be here for the next hour, cameras on, cameras off, wherever you're calling in from the world. And it's, and I'd like it for it to be worthwhile for all of us. Um, in virtual events, it's our responsibility to create the social norm. We can't go in assuming that everyone is agreed. Um, we don't have the chance to walk into a room together to find our friends, to see, um, to see how people interact, to see the body language, to go eat snacks in the back if we're feeling a little bit hungry. We don't have a shared environment. So it's really easy to just show up in this environment as, as an icon, as a picture, or just a name, and listen but not actually be present, which when we're choosing to spend our time, is that how we want to be living our lives? And because there are no social norms agreed upon at this point, we, I would love for us to do an activity where we create them. Uh, so this activity is an ad adaptation of a longer game known as Curious. And I will start it off. What I'd like is for you to share a norm for a virtual event that you have found helpful in feeling connected with the group that could be applied to this session. If we all agree to it, we'll give a physical thumbs up and then we'll agree to do it. So I'll write down proposals on the screen. This is a, an infinite whiteboard. So anything that you say, I can copy down. And if we all agree to it, give a thumbs up, then we'll mark it green and we'll agree to do it. So for the first one, I'm gonna propose a norm. And if we agree, we give it a thumbs up and then we implement it. Does that sound good for the folks who are in participation? All right, Tenzin and Mario, what about yourself? How does this work for you? All right, cool. So I will mark this one green and let's see. Um, Tenzin, I am curious um, if you would be willing to go first and share about something from a, a Zoom event or a virtual event that you found supportive and feeling connected with the group. Um, offering encouragement through the chat. All right. Encouragement through the chat. Okay, I'm I'm thumbs up for the encouragement through the chat. Um, I'm gonna put in a minor spin on this one. Um, definitely encouragement through the chat. If you wanna do a visual encouragement, the, the spirit fingers is also a good way of doing a, a visual encouragement. I'm gonna mark that one green. Um, anyone else have something that they've found supportive before I call on you? I have one. Yeah, what's up? Nancy? I like when people share their animals if they're around. Okay. Let's I think do it creates it. a fun atmosphere. Share animals. Okay, does anyone have any animals that are right around them that they could be pointing at? I've got a got two dogs that are over there. Can we see them? No, we can't, unfortunately. They're in the <laughs> other room. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so the sharing the animals may be a little bit tougher to implement right now, but in general, definitely worth something worthwhile to to keep in mind. What else would be supportive in feeling connected with this group right now that we could potentially implement? Alex, what about yourself? I really like the uh, raise your hand feature on Zoom. So the uh, speaker does not get interrupted. I'm a, th I'm a thumbs up on that. And if, if you're raising your hand, um, actually I have a whoop right there. On the bottom of your screen, there's a little uh, portion to raise your hand. You can choose to do that or you can also just like raise your hand. I'll also be able to see you in that case. Does that sound good for everyone? All right, cool. We're doing it. What else? Sharing things about yourself, like what do you do for the weekend, or uh, what do you have going on for the week? All right. 
sharing and introductions. Um, definitely worthwhile, I think, in terms of time sensitivity. We could do it, but we'd have to go really, really quickly. So we do actually have some breakout sessions later on. So I'll hold off on doing introductions with everyone. And I found that sh um, the sharing and intros works incredibly well if you have, actually, Michael, spot on. This is the perfect opportunity to be using a chat. If you would be willing to write in the chat um, something about yourself, either the organization you're a part of, your very brief intro, that would be a, a great way of going about it. Thank you, Michael, joining from Bristol and a council member. We'll just give a, a minute as, as everyone jots something down. Awesome. Council members joining from Shang Shanghai, Newcastle, UK, also council members. Um, Alex from New York, currently in San Francisco, recently joined the team. It's awesome. Um, so I'm going to propose a, another one, which would be um, adjusting your name to potentially um, to include your gender pronouns. Um, is that something that would be acceptable for the folks who are participating. Would you be willing to do that? Awesome. What we wanna be doing is creating a, a safe space um, or alternatively calling it a brave space where people can share, contribute and participate in, in any way that they feel called to at this time. So we have, all right. And if you don't know how to do that, if you click on participants on the bottom and then your own name, um, there's a little button that says more and you can add that. And I see that some of you have not done it. Definitely preferable if you do, but totally understand if you don't have the ability to at this moment. But I found that it's really worthwhile, especially when working with groups of different backgrounds. What else has been supportive or comforting? I've got a list, but I would love to hear from, from all of you. Elizabeth, what about yourself? What have you found to be fun or effective? Um, I've found um, that I really, I understand there are always some sort of um, you know, limitations, but I really do appreciate when people are able to put on video. I know that's not the case every time, but that actually, it helps to see people's different faces and their different backgrounds and like, Someone pointed out, Lindsay pointed out cats and pets. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm a full thumbs up. Are we, are we on board to keep it, to have our videos on? And if you're eating or you need to turn your videos off, that's also totally understandable. But if you're able to be present and you want to be a pr present for this, turn on your videos. We're all here. Um, <clears throat> some other things. So raising your hand. Um, Staying present, uh, awesome, thanks, Doug. Another thing that you can do if you notice that you keep getting distracted is you can actually turn off self-view. So if <laughs> this is something that I, I do in some situations when it's generally myself and one or two other people where if you click on yourself, you can hide self-view. So you're no longer looking at yourself. You're just looking at the participants. All right, anything else I have, I've got, just a few more that could be added, but I would love to hear if there are other suggestions. <clears throat> All right, um, what about gallery view? <clears throat> the difference between gallery view and speaker view is, is huge, and especially when somebody is sharing their screen. On the top right-hand corner, if you click on view and at either side-by-side <clears throat> -side gallery or gallery, it makes a difference. You'll be able to see everyone's faces, um, and you can decide how important it is the content, how important the content on the screen actually is, as opposed to it taking up the entire screen. So, if you're willing to do that, thumbs up. Cool. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> 
All right. So um, let's see anything else. Introductions and awesome. Thank you, Christine. See if you can in a bit. That's perfect. Yeah. Raising your hands, turning off self view, gallery view. <clears throat> so all of these little things are things that that we can do as ourselves in any Zoom conversation that can increase the participation. <clears throat> any any reflections of of this exercise and actually talking about the setting these norms that comes up. I, I wanted to to add in. I just want to thank you, John, for creating this and organizing it, and Tia and Lindsay for also organizing this. This is just really cool that we're able to come together and do this. Yeah. And that is the perfect segue. I am going to um, pass it over to Tia to talk a little bit about what we're all doing here and what it is that unites us. Well, thank you, John. Um, also, John's in Monterey, and I'm horribly jealous, even though I live in beautiful Mexico. Um, I was stationed in Monterey and will always have a place in my heart for that town. Um, so uh, yeah, our fellow seminars, um, so every summer, um, well, every, this is our second uh, class, we take on some summer fellows and we screen them from all over the, uh, the world. And um, what we really strive to do with our fellows is have people that are both interested in the data enabled science field, but are also interested in social good um, and in, in learning how to apply what they're learning um, to, to something bigger than themselves. So I really love our fellows to participate in all sorts of fun things. And our seminars, um, as most of you know, the Council, of good, Council for Good was launched fairly recently. And we have this amazing breadth of, of, of experts in the field. And what I've tried to do is create seminars that are a mix of highly technical topics Achim will be presenting an uh, uh, in-depth NLP workshop. And then we have John, who's coming from more the community and technology aspect. So I really want everyone to, to bring together that, that mix of, of the community and nonprofit side, but also in respect to, to the data sciences. And so this is our first um, open call to the to the Council for Good members to join us. I promise you'll be invited to the rest of the ones this summer. And I really want this to be free flowing um, so that all fellows and Council for Good members can participate. Thank you. I think you're on mute. Much appreciated, thank you. So something that I'm really excited about is that, and apologies for there's a phone ringing in the background, that technology is the study of progress. It's of what humans create. And it's cool that it's also the thing itself. Um, mythology is the study of myth. Psychology is the study of the psyche. Technology is sort of the study of, of technology in itself. And this conversation here is about technology and community where if technology is the study of transformation tools and machines created by beings, usually humans, um, basically everything that we have created is technology. Uh, we have digital technologies, which frequently seem like they can solve all of the problems if we find the right one. Unfortunately, um, large discovery and huge bummer, the, the solution and the, the way to form community isn't just about adopting a new piece of technology. It frequently comes back to getting back to the basics of, and one of my, my absolute favorite questions is, what is the point of this conversation? Or alternatively, what's the point of this interaction? So opening it up for another opportunity to, for me to jot down some stuff. And I'm curious about what it is or why it is that you are here and in a more meta sense, what do you think the point of interaction as a whole is? Why are you connecting with people, having a conversation? Um, what, why bother? And that is a prompt for anyone to either raise their hand or um, turn themselves off of mute and say something.
Justin, what about yourself? Yeah, you can see me uh, struggling with the uh, interface there. Um, it's not my uh, normal um, video conferencing tool. Um, the point of conversation, mm -hmm. um, from my point of view, um, I think it, in the broadest sense is about enrichment, enrichment of experience and carry on that theme through to the nth degree. Awesome. Thank you. I agree. Oh, yeah. I'm give myself a round of applause as well. I'm nailing it. Yeah. Oh, and if, and if there's agreement, definitely feel free to do the, the spirit fingers. Or um, in, I work with a non an ocean nonprofit generally. We have the kelp wave. So we actually go like this during all of our meetings. Um, I'm curious what else comes up. So enrichment, I think it's definitely um, is, is a word that has a lot of, of potential subtleties. It has, it's also very encompassing. I'm curious if there are more specifics of why do you bother connecting with people? Why did you bother showing up today? Elizabeth. Um, um, you know, the part of this conversation, and I think other ones, is we really have the intention of building the community of council members, summer fellows. I think that's really the essence of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually. So, does that that sort of the um, learning, but really the the who who is a part of this community? So, there's information and the who. Cool. What else? Doug. It's Doug, yeah. Just um, to go to that, it's kindred souls. That's the way I think of it, right? Uh, people that are interested in the same topic, and this topic being data science for social good or, you know, AI for good, um, mm -hmm. and, and learning and all the other things around. But learning is also a part of it. I want to learn from the experts, which are you. Um, so hopefully, we'll be able to get into some learning and, and experience building um through others well cool. and you actually went the, there are two really cool points that come up with that one is learning from the experts the other is this um this recognition of kindred souls and this this feeling of of empathy and connection so i think those are those are both excellent points anything else that's that's coming up that anyone wants to share Um, Lindsay, I'm going to do a quick call on you. Um, would you be willing to share? Sure. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm actually very big on like shared human connection. And I think like this field of like the sustainable ocean Alliance or, um, you know, just sustainability in general, it's a very small field for how big a problem it is to me. And so I think it's really comforting to find people that are equally passionate about it. So I mean, so I think these are all these are all spot on. It's about enrichment, connecting with people, learning, finding meaning or insight, finding different points of views, the finding an opportunity to shift your own views, developing new ideas. Um, connection is also entertainment. It's about finding the right people. I like to break it into sort of these these two two avenues of engagement, and every conversation has the potential for both. But the point of conversation is it's either to connect, which is to develop a level of trust to find your people or to learn or to teach, whether it's for a specific cause, talking with your manager or a, a direct report about a specific problem, or in this context, um, it's interesting. You're here for a reason. And in a lot of cases, it's to be here to connect with this group, or it's to learn about what you assumed the value of technology in, in online organizing would mean, which there was no real context about it outside of that. So those are really the, the two primary solutions or primary causes, which leads to the next concept of the default response or our default way of being. And that way of being, the way that you show up in the world and your desires to interact with others has somehow led you here. 
So every person has a default response to a scenario where in conflict we have fight, flight, or freeze. And it's important to keep in mind that there's so much more nuance to those reactions, um, but we won't get into that right now. And what I wanna to point to is that we have the ability to architect our default response in a way that can more effectively build community. So if the default response is present in all aspects of your life, when you're waiting for someone in the car, when you're, before you go to bed, when you have a new idea or when you hear about something cool, there is some, some default response, some um, immediate reaction that you don't think about that leads you to some next activity. Um, it, for example, Steve Jobs always wore a, a, black, um, <clears throat> a black turtleneck. That became his default response, but it was a choice to decrease the, the mental bandwidth or the mental, the brain power to avoid making more decisions. If we choose a default response that is leading towards community building, we have a, a strong propensity to, in fact, subtly or just as a byproduct, build that community. So another quick activity. <clears throat> so, all right, get yourself ready for a prompt. However, you take information out of your brain and capture it. Okay, whether that's taking out a notebook, whatever it may be. So the prompt is, what is something awesome that you learned recently? And then I want you to continue writing and reflecting a little bit about what happened after you learned it. Did you feel an urge to share it? Um, did you share it and with who or how? And then what activities had you feeling most connected or alive? So I'm gonna put on a, a timer for two minutes um, <clears throat> where you can capture that, that thing that you learned that, and what you did with that, that thing. And feel free to turn your camera off for this period of time. Um, music will be playing and I'll bring everyone back in a moment. Right. <clears throat> that is all the time we have. It's always interesting to see what happens when we get into our own brains and put pen to paper or fingers to keyboard or whatever it may be. <clears throat> so all right, I'm just going to wait for a few folks to bring their cameras back on, join us back in the space. All right, I'm not intending to call people out, but I'm going to say names because I'm about to put people into breakout rooms for a brief discussion. So Mario, Michael, Wendy, um, Akshay, Tia, and Christine, if you are present, it would make my life much easier to not have to reorganize uh, breakout rooms. All right, <clears throat> perfect. So based on the number of people we have, we're gonna do group, groups of three or four, and I'm gonna put everyone into a group for five minutes. And in that group, share what you captured and where, and be aware of the time and leave space for others to chat. Um, the, the amount of time remaining will be visible on the top right-hand hand of the, of the, um, the screen. And I'll put everyone in there for six minutes. So the prompt again is <clears throat> share about what you captured, where, and then what does that mean for you? So groups of three or four, six, minute shift, six minutes, and I will see you all back here relatively shortly. And if you have any questions, feel free to press the um, ask for help if you are confused. Does that sound good? All right. <clears throat> Enjoy your chats. My favorite thing is when I close breakout rooms and nobody comes back immediately. It means that there's something good happening out there. And I'm really curious what came up in, in those conversations. If anyone's willing to, to share any similarities between what you shared or things you found surprising. Um, Alex, love if you start us off. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I thought our breakout room was really interesting because we, the three of us, Christine, Elizabeth, and I totally ran the gamut in completely different responses. 
Um, Elizabeth talked about a, she's learned a lot about herself in terms of like a, a new kind of creative streak that she's having. And it was a much more like introspective view. Um, what I shared was like super technical and boring like I am, like, like I'm doing research this summer and I find it really interesting. Um, and then Christine shared like a more, I don't know, she's learned kind of, sometimes people in life maybe kind of abuse the power that they have and it's been a, you know, not so fun realization that she's come to, but, uh, you know, useful nonetheless. Cool, thank you. What else came up? Either reflections on the group or if you learned something awesome, I would love to hear about it and if you would share it with the larger group. And feel free to just unmute yourself. Um, no need to raise your hand on this one. Uh, well, if I may um, invite Alex in the group I was in with Jose to say a little bit, if he would like, about the wobbling of the moon, which may have impact on tides. I'll accept that invitation. Yeah. So I was. Thank um, you, Alex. <laughs> So uh, yesterday, my, my coworkers and I, we were circulating this article that uh, we had noticed, I guess, and I'm not an astrophysicist, I'm not gonna do this justice, but I guess there's some unexpected wobbles in the moon's orbit that's gonna have some serious implications for coastal flooding in the next few decades. Uh, and just adding that on top of everything we've seen in Western Europe and China in the last week um, with the rising sea levels, it's just, the wrong time for something like this. So this is something where we take that information, we kind of connect it to um, other information we're seeing out there. And then uh, in the case of my work, we, we share it with some of our partners over at NASA and the, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, like, because that's going to dictate a lot of our work and the things that they want to spend time on going forward. Oh, thank you. And I, I'm seeing that the, those, those responses of what do you do with that information it's yes, it is related to to the work and in and improving lives and well-being, but there's there's personal and professional. And I I've it's you may have realized um, as someone who is here, the personal life and the professional life, they often overlap quite a bit, and they're not necessarily very distinct. Uh, we show up as ourselves in a lot of ways. Curious what else. Um, what other awesome stuff has come up? Um, and fellows, I would love to hear what's coming up from you if, if you're willing to be put on the spot. Mario, did you hear a did you hear a theme in our breakout session? Well, I don't know if this is a theme you're referring to, but I, I kind of picked up on the fact that we all learned something about ourselves. Um, like mine was about health, yours was about time. Uh, Doug was about uh, what's it called himself, like learning how to uh, program, or that he still knows how to program, but uh, he did. He's just recently picked it up again, and I believe it was Wendy learned uh, more about herself as well. So um, I think that's what you're referring to, or what was the pattern that you were? No, you, you got on. I think that um, we're all like looking at the process of how we do things, whether it's coding or, um, you know, how we interact at work or our health or just in life and and being mindful of, of the implications on us in our personal and professional space. That's awesome. And I full I, I fully resonate a lot of the, the most exciting things or things that I'm most surprised by do have a bit of, of introspection. And there's there's always more to uncover from that front. Any other final points around things that you learned or how you captured it? Were you surprised that other people were doing it differently than you were? All right, cool. So when you think about the groups that you're a part of, how many of you actually know every single person involved? Um, 
really how many people do you actually need to know to form an identity around a group? And well, of course, the answer is it, it depends. Um, it's less than you. Um, it's less than you think, and it's more about a few strong relationships. So the few people that that you know well, and that feeling of familiarity, where a community and a collective identity is. It's around the one-on-one -on -one relationships that have been built upon a shared experience of interaction that could be around your expectations of values, um, a default or a safe type of conversation to have. Uh, I mean, how many of you have gone into to work and there's always, some people talk about the game. There's that, that activity, that thing that you can talk about that's safe um, <clears throat> or some other common goal. Uh, there have to be active relationships which means there needs to be a heartbeat to the community, a chance for people to interact, and whether that's in-person, virtual, um, through scheduled calls, through, through some, some technology. And we need emotional ties to bring recognition between the individuals, which is knowing when someone is having a child or a hard work experience or has pets, like bringing the person, bringing us into the third dimension. Um, I often call it the, I get really excited when people stop being NPCs or non-player characters, which is a video game reference where, oh, you're actually, you are a rich and dynamic human being that has an entire life that I don't understand. And once we can see that, that will lead to a stronger connection. So I, I will also say that I miss physical experiences and I'm really excited as they can return because we often forget the level of, of bandwidth that can occur in those spaces where in this virtual space, we can see each other's faces. It's, it's pretty darn good. It's way better than writing a letter, sort of. I mean, when you're writing a letter, you're taking that time out of your day and somebody receives that letter, the, the feeling of warmth that may arise, it's different. And the way that we choose to interact is always different and there are always opportunity costs. But back to the physical environment, um, I'm always really excited about the idea of you're creating a shared experience with shared lights, sounds, smells, pheromones, like the people that you're spending time with on a regular basis, you become more familiar even if you don't see them simply because your body is aware that there are people that are a part of your tribe that you're familiar with. And through all of those conversations, interactions, connections, um, you are being present, whether physically or virtually, and you are shaping those communities that you're a part of, which really brings me to um, a final-ish point, which is that you are the messages you spread. The information that you share and how you share it, the information you share and how you're going about sharing it. And while people aren't necessarily interacting with you, they are interacting with their story of you and you're interacting with your story of them. So while you can't choose what their story of you is, um, you can create evidence that they can choose to acknowledge. So by simply existing, you're influencing the world around you. And I'm always curious, what evidence are you choosing to leave in your wake? What are the messages that you spread? So I would love to either have any immediate reflections in this larger group, but otherwise I would be, I would be happy to put us back into the same groups or different groups. Any preferences? Anybody really wanna go back into the same group? All right, cool, I'm gonna do different groups then. Um, We're going to go into different groups for the next um, seven minutes. And the prompt in, in this is what are the, the messages you spread? What are the values you're trying to leave behind? And <clears throat> in every conversation, if you could only leave one thing, what would it be? How do you want the world to, to change as you are? you're going through your life, just simply being. So 
while that is definitely a long-winded and perhaps um, meta prompt, does it feel like it's possible to have a, a conversation around that? All right, cool. Um, so I'm gonna put you into groups of three or four and we will be back at um, four minutes past the, or four minutes before the hour. So I'm gonna open up the rooms right now. All right, back into gallery view. That was very interesting. I'm, I'm curious if there are any reflections that, that have come up. I know we are just about at the end of our time, but I'll, I'll go with one that I, I just can't resist sharing, um, which Doug brought up about the roles that, that he plays and that we play in our own lives. The differences between our, our academic personas and our family personas and our, our friends or other personas and how technology has made it so easy to do that. And by separating our roles and just being academic without the family, without that, the emotional connection, people don't necessarily feel as connected and finding the, the ways to blend those is tough. I mean, Facebook versus LinkedIn, they're trying to be so different unless you live in the Bay Area in which Facebook is the place to be. Um, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I would love to hear some other reflections and thank you for doing that. Justin, what's up? Oh, cool. It's, it's, that was rapid. Um, yeah, I, I think that that's really interesting. The theme of our conversation um, uh, picked that up as well of uh, being genuine perceptions of what is real and then also the um, uh, difficulty that comes with that um, cynicism that might exist around the curated self, the presented self. Um, and um, how I guess how then our message is that if we have the, if we're speaking with each other, we need to accept that we're all being genuine. Otherwise, perhaps it's difficult, therefore, to have a real conversation. Mm -hmm. There's an excellent norm there that can be applied, which is assume good intentions. <laughs> yeah, which is tough to do sometimes. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a leap of faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else is coming up? All right. Well, we are just about at time. So I think I want to put some some closing remarks on here. Um, the most important one is we are all here because of, of shared values of how we want to introspect. It was really cool hearing about that. It's not just the, the future that we're talking about of the planet, of technology. There's also a lot about ourselves and how we show up in the worlds. So I think it's, I just want to acknowledge you all for being able to bridge that gap of your personal development in combination with technological progress and how you show up in that, that larger world. And uh, ideally an end result of this is you had, if you talk to somebody that you really liked, continue the conversation. Um, all of our contact information is on the Council for Good website or you, Tia, I'm sure can connect us all. And I would love to, to continue the chat if anyone who wants to talk more about the stuff that came up here, happy to. And I do have like more technology actually stuff that we can talk about, but this is, it's been really fun to, to be here with all of you. Thank you, John, for reminding us that everyone, that technology can be a connector um, and, and kind of bringing us, us, us back um, into a more close-knit group. And uh, it's great that technology is used for resource, research and in, innovation and all the things, but also just taking a step back and learning how to listen to one another and, um, and, and our body cues, even in Zoom. So thank you. All right, so final request is if everyone can turn their microphone back on and say, Bye, thank you all for coming, or something of those nature of those. All right, three, right. two, one.
Bye. Thank you all for coming. Bye. 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 Look forward to the next time. Bye. You too.